Welcome to Getting Started with Chef. I'm Ben Lambert, and I'll be your instructor for this course. Do you remember back in the old days of tech where servers were handcrafted snowflakes? Even if two servers had the same role, they weren't really guaranteed to be exactly the same. I have to say, while I do oftentimes miss the amusing names that these servers were given, I don't miss trying to figure out why one server was working and another server that was supposed to be set up exactly the same way wasn't working. Luckily, configuration management tools such as Chef help to make this issue and others a thing of the past. Chef is able to ensure that servers meet your desired state, and if they drift away from that state, maybe because a person made a manual change, Chef can bring it back to the desired state. This course, as the title suggests, is intended to help you get started learning Chef. By the end of the course, you're not going to be the world's foremost expert in Chef. However, you'll be well on your way to understanding enough of the core concepts to start using it for some basic tasks. So, this course really is about teaching you the fundamentals of Chef. Here are the learning objectives for the course. By the end of the course, you should be able to understand the use cases for Chef, explain the Chef architecture, describe the components of Chef, and even create a simple cookbook. Learning a configuration management tool such as Chef does come along with some prerequisites. So here's what you'll need to already know before taking this course. You should have a solid understanding of configuration management concepts. You should have some programming experience, and ideally it would be in Ruby. Now that doesn't mean you need to be a professional Ruby developer, though you're going to find it easier to follow along if you at least know the basics of Ruby. And you'll need to have at least a basic understanding of system administration. So, how do you know if this course is right for you? Well, if you've ever wanted to automate the software installation process or server configuration across all of your servers with one command, then you're in the right place. If your job title is something like DevOps engineer, site reliability engineer, systems administrator, or developer, then this course could help you to learn about a tool that will help manage your infrastructure at scale. Here's the agenda for this course. Now, some of these terms may not be familiar to you just yet, so don't worry if you're not familiar with them. By the end of the course, you will be. I'm gonna start with an overview of Chef at a very high level, including which companies are using it and how they're using it. Then I'll drill down a bit more to cover the high level architecture of Chef. After that, I'll talk about the anatomy of a cookbook. If you don't yet know anything about Chef, you're going to soon see that everything is named after something that's related to cooking. The following lesson I'll cover the recipe DSL. After that, I'm going to set up my Mac so that it has the software required to start developing code with Chef. And then I'll show you how to create your first recipe. Then I'm going to show you how to make the code a bit more cross distribution friendly by testing it against multiple Linux distributions. In the lesson after that, I'll show you how to deploy a LAMP application, and then I'll show you how to configure the Chef server for basic development. Then I'll create some servers to run the code against. After that, I'll explain how to use roles and data bags, and then I'll wrap up the course by summarizing what was covered. Okay, in case you want to try some of this stuff out for yourself, you can find the links to any of the source code used in the course on the About This Course tab. There's a lot of information to cover throughout the course, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So if all of this sounds interesting to you, then let's get started with the first lesson.